The first thing we need to do to tackle this question uh, is to note that when we are finding out which pupil would be picked, all we have to do is follow through the method which is mentioned just here. So we start with our random number, we call it x, let's say, and the first thing we do is times by 853, which will give us 853x, and then we add 1, so we get 853x plus 1. And after that we round it off. So on your calculator, you'll put the first one in, you put your 0 0.103 times it by 853 and add 1 and then that will give you your answer which is rounded off 88.9 and then you can round that off to 89. And so if you follow this process for the five numbers you can just go back into your formula and replace this, then you'll find you get 89, 90, 91, 91, and 92. So that's part one. For part two, use your answers to show this method is biased. Well, it will have popped out at you straight away, I'm sure, that we have a problem here, which is that two of the uh, random numbers that we started with, in fact the these two, generate 91. And so that means that student number 91 has twice as much chance as the others to be picked. So it is biased and you'd write something along those lines. So for um, how to improve it? Well, if we're going to stick with the basic idea of using a calculator to generate random three-digit numbers, then given that our pupil numbers are essentially three digits because they go up to 853, then we could just times by a thousand and then ignore any numbers that were greater than uh, 853. So any numbers greater than 853 we would just ignore. And that's the simplest way to suggest an improvement. Um, notice we can't just give a completely new method because it's asking for an improvement. I'd just like to say a little bit about randomness because it's important that you know that calculators don't generate random numbers they actually generate pseudo-random numbers. Now, for the purposes in the question of selecting a random sample of 30 pupils from a school, um, it's close enough to true randomness that it won't affect the experiment. But there are situations where proper randomness is required, and in that case, you can't use a computer-generated one. If we wanted a truly random sample from this situation, then we could use dice, say. We could use ten-sided dice to give us our three-digit numbers, and then, as before, ignore any that are greater than 853. Um, we could get 853 pieces of paper with the numbers on and pick them out from a hat, which would be random. Um, we could also use a website because there are websites which give true random numbers not pseudo random and they do that by using some sort of random input there is for example a website called random.org which if you're interested you could have a look at and random.org uses atmospheric noise which is radio noise caused by natural atmospheric processes uh, to to then generate truly random in fact, for any job like this, it's much better to use technology to help you. Um, we could do it on Excel quite easily. So if I start typing equals and then the word random, 
you can see that some options come up and even without looking it up I'm thinking random between looks like the right sort of thing random between bottom number top number yeah so I can pop in 1 comma 853 close the bracket and there's a random number between 1 and 853 pseudo random but just as random as the one that the calculator would give you and then I could drag that down to 30 which I foolishly left out of my screen but there we are it goes down to 30 and then I've got all the pupil numbers without any faffing about we could turn to our trusty GeoGebra and here's one that I've just knocked up and if we want to get a different selection we can press update and it gives us another this is just set up for 10 numbers um, we can see them on the number line um, and it gives an interesting view if you keep clicking of what randomness means you can see we get clumps we've got a little clump here and a sort of clump there sometimes they're all well spread out although those two aren't uh, and it's an interesting thing to study. Now, in order to uh, set this up, we've had to do a few little things. So the first thing was to do a random between, which is similar to the Excel command. And then this is a sequence. This generates a sequence of numbers, and um, 1 to 10. So that's why we've got 10 numbers. The second thing was to sort them into order and then to make them into points which were the these points along here so they've all got the number as their x coordinate the zero as their y coordinate and then again it's just generating a sequence of 10 numbers